Professor Kobe Michael, welcome to the program World on Fire on Jerusalem Post. And at each program, we are inviting uh, experts to speak about uh, the world, what is going on. The world is mad. There are wars everywhere, it looks like. And now there is a new war in the last months in the Middle East. And before that, uh, about two years ago, started the war in Europe. So I want to start with the current situation in Israel. What do you make of all of that? Why now? Why Hamas attacked so brutally that more than uh, 1,000 terrorists, bloody ones, uh, came to Israel and they slaughtered so many innocent people, uh, babies, uh, and the uh, young uh, people that just came to a music festival and they kidnapped uh, also women, elderly people. Why? Why they did it now? In order to uh, to reply to this question, we have to go um, back for <clears throat> we have to go uh, uh, some years uh, backward in order to uh, to understand what is eventually the strategy or the vision of Hamas. And um, I think that uh, the, our point of departure is uh, 2014, um, the, the operation that uh, that was uh, that was held in the summer of 2014, and then uh, the the organizing rationale of Hamas strategy, which was uh, the idea of creating a multi-front theater. Um, vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Israel and actually uh, they began first of all uh, building the main center of gravity which is the Gaza Strip by um, fortifying um, their um, terror capacities and infrastructure uh, and uh, developing a, a sort of uh, I would say um, a dual strategy um, since uh, 2021. Um, and the idea was, the basic idea was actually to build uh, several fronts in the inner cycle of Israel, which means the Gaza Strip is Jerusalem, the West Bank, uh, the domestic arena in Israel, which means the Arab citizens of Israel, and South Lebanon with uh, full cooperation with Hezbollah, which means full cooperation with Iran. And um, the idea was to use East Jerusalem, uh, mainly uh, the Temple Mount, Haram al-Sharif, as the trigger for the eruption that will bring all the fronts to, uh, to, to be opened together simultaneously against Israel uh, in order to collapse the state of Israel. Uh, this is the, the general idea of Hamas uh, strategy since uh, 2014 mainly um, uh, since the, uh, 2021 um, and um, we saw that in uh, May 21 uh, they actually used the, the, the friction and the, and the escalation in East Jerusalem in order to set an ultimate ultimatum to the government of Israel uh, demanding to evacuate uh, Sheikh Jarrah, uh, demanding to uh, uh, prevent um, the, the flags uh, march in uh, Jerusalem day and so on and so forth and uh, they realized the ultimatum by launching launching seven rockets toward Jerusalem and this was uh, the opening of um, of uh, the um, the operation in uh, May uh, May 21. Uh, and we saw that uh, they uh, eventually uh, succeeded in uh, opening uh, simultaneously all the five fronts from the Gaza Strip to Lebanon towards East Jerusalem, the West Bank, and the Arab citizens of Israel. Um, and uh, eventually, um, uh, I would say that uh, they upgraded or improved their strategic position since this, since this, uh, since this operation. And um, uh, with uh, the years, they uh, tightened the relations with, uh, uh, with Iran and Hezbollah. They deepened and broadened the relations with Iran and Hezbollah. And here we see an encounter of interests, an encounter of uh, an organizing rationale between Hamas strategy and Iran strategy. They are very similar in their essence. The Iranian strategy for more than a decade is the idea of uh, creating, establishing 
fortifying and preparing um, five uh, uh, arenas uh, against Israel by their proxies. It's uh, South Lebanon, uh, uh, Syria, West Iraq, Yemen, and the Palestinian arena. And the idea was, first of all, to deter Israel from attacking Iran on the Iranian soil. Secondly, to harass Israel and to drag Israel to a continuing attrition war in order to exhaust the Israeli society, the IDF, and eventually due to their, I would say, um, general uh, uh, idea about uh, the essence of Israel as a, as a, a spider web, okay? Uh, they believe that they will be able in the right day uh, in the right moment to uh, open all of these um, arenas simultaneously to attack Israel from all of this arena and to collapse Israel. And here we see the encounter between Hamas logic and Iran logic, okay, the Iranian logic. And this is the reason that Iran uh, in the last, uh, uh, I would say, uh, supported, heavily supported Hamas. Uh, uh, by providing military knowledge and technology and so on, so and intelligence and so on. now um, all of these all of this introduction is in order to answer your question why uh, the attack on uh, October seven and the attack on October seven was actually the um, the initiating move of Hamas because they believed that uh, the consequences of the attack will be um, so dramatic that they will. Um, they will uh, bring all the inner cycles or the inner fronts that they have already prepared to attack Israel. Israel will be dragged to a very chaotic situation, and this will be the right moment for the Iranians to open the external fronts against Israel, and this will be the, 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 the end of the state of Israel, the end of the Zionist project. Um, Otherwise, uh, I can see uh, no reason for such a massive attack that, by the way, uh, could not be uh, realized without two crucial envelopes, the technological envelope and the intelligence envelope, that with all the respect to Hamas, they are not capable to produce such envelopes. Uh, such envelopes can be produced only by very capable states like Iran, and Iran is the only capable state that will be willing to provide these envelopes to Hamas. And this is the reason that Iran is deeply involved, okay, in this uh, operation, in this attack. And I'm sure that Iran also was involved in the planning and the training of Hamas um, for, this, uh, for this attack. Uh, but uh, fortunately, uh, and although Israel is engaged since October 7, in a multi-front war, we are engaged uh, in uh, in five active fronts in different levels of uh, intensity, but we are engaged in five fronts. Um, the most intensive one is the Gaza Strip, but we are in a terror war in the West Bank. Um, we are uh, in a war with Hezbollah in the in the north. Uh, we have the uh, the Shiite militia in South Syria, and uh, uh, we have uh, the Houthis in Yemen. Okay. And there are two additional fronts that uh, might be opened uh, um, soon. And this is West Iraq and the domestic arena in Israel, the Arab citizens of Israel. And uh, But uh, despite the fact that we are already engaged in the multi-front war, this is not what Hamas expected to be. Okay, Hamas didn't succeed to evoke eventually uh, the inner cycles, okay? And they didn't succeed to bring Iran to evoke or to operate the external cycles. And they were left almost alone. Um, so this is uh, uh, at least my explanation uh, to Hamas' motivation to, uh, to launch, to exercise such a massive and brutal and murderous barbaric attack. Um, and this is the reason uh, for our being at a very intensive war in the Gaza Strip and uh, less intensive war in the other fronts. So what went wrong with this, uh, their plan that was uh, since 2014 or before that they thought about this uh, multi-attack on Israel from all the fronts? Why, why now Hamas uh, left alone? Why Iran uh, and the others are not really joining these uh, fights to maybe exterminate uh, Israel? 
because once again, uh, it has been proven that the Arabs uh, are mistaken with regard to their understanding the Israeli psyche or the Israeli society. They believe uh, that they know the Israeli society, and therefore they concluded that Israel is in the weakest uh, weakest point. Okay, that Israel that that's, the Israeli society is very very fragile that uh, there is no any social cohesion, that, that there is no resilience, that the Israeli government um, is not determined, that, that is not able to, to retaliate aggressively, that the IDF, uh, due to the demonstrations and due to the um, refusal of uh, reservists uh, to, uh, um, to be recruited to uh, reserve service and so on and so forth, they believe that this is the, 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 the ripest moment for them okay, to launch such an attack. And they were wrong, and this is not the first time that they are wrong. Okay, uh, it began since uh, forty-eight, um, and even before forty-eight. Um, and I think that uh, the 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 rapid manner that Israel actually and mainly the IDF recovered itself and uh, and began their retaliation, a very aggressive retaliation, actually signaled. To the uh, to the other fronts, uh, mainly to the Iranians, that they have to be very cautious in this regard, and Israel is not what they thought that Israel is. Okay. Uh, in addition to that, I would say that um, there is uh, also a meaning or a consequence or a significance to to the American presence here. The American very rapidly arrived to the region. Okay, with their uh, um, with their uh, craft carriers and, uh, and uh, the, the American president was very determined. And uh, this is something that projects uh, deterrence as well towards Iran. And we have to remember that uh, Hezbollah um, uh, is not uh, an independent player. I mean, it's first of all an Iranian proxy and therefore they don't have the freedom uh, making their own decision in this world and they are fully dependent on the Iranians. And this is exactly what is going there with the other proxies of Iran, be it in South Syria, uh, West uh, Iraq, uh, or uh, Yemen. Okay, uh, so uh, the Iranians uh, are paying uh, lip service, and they are um, uh, uh, retaliating in a very, I would say, calculated manner uh, in the other fronts. Um, in a more intensive manner in the northern front with regard to Hezbollah. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, they might uh, make a mistake because if they will continue uh, the provocations uh, and the escalation in the north, they might drag Israel to a full-scale war with Hezbollah as well. And Israel will have to finalize uh, the, the the work with Hezbollah as well as uh, uh, it tries to finalize the work with uh, Hamas in the Gaza Strip. And this will uh, actually cut the arms of the Iranian octopus, okay, and uh, will paralyze the the Iranian uh, capabilities here in the, in the broader Middle East. But I think that at least um, as far as I understand the Iranian strategic calculations, they are uh, pretty cautious right now, and they are not running to intervene very intensively in this war. And they actually are leave the Palestinian uh, for their sake, for their own, um, believing that the international pressure uh, or the uh, intensity of the resistance of Hamas in the Gaza Strip and the complexities of the urban war will prevent Israel from eliminating the military and the governmental uh, capacities of Hamas. But once again, I think that they are wrong in this regard. And uh, you were uh, before the Strategic Affairs uh, Office uh, in Israel. And uh, maybe you can see better than others the broader picture. Israel is part of the world. And which role the major superpowers, as uh, the United States, Russia and China, playing in this uh, Arab, Palestinian, uh, Muslim, Israeli, Jewish uh, conflict. What is their role and how Israel should uh, behave and try to maneuver between all those uh, different powers and interests? There is a lot of sets of interests to those countries. What Israel should do 
in order to survive in this uh, tough uh, Middle Eastern neighborhood? Let me emphasize two or three points in this regard. First of all, um, we are already in a regional war, okay? This is, must be understood. This is not a, a limited local uh, war between Israel and Hamas. Hamas is a component of a much broader camp or axis, the resistance axis, which is led by Iran and supported by Russia and China, okay? So in this regard, it is not only a regional war, it is a global war. Why? Because everything that happens here, mainly with the American presence, presence here and with, with the American determination with regard to the Iranians, and generally speaking, with regard to the war here in the region, um, everything that happens here uh, projects immediately on the other conflict uh, arenas in the entire globe, be it Ukraine or Southern Chinese Sea or uh, other conflict arenas. Uh, it, it, it also projects on, on the American position as the leading superpower and the leading of the, the free world and leading of, um, the I would say, the sort of coalition um, that uh, has been built here in the region um, by the Americans, uh, of course, with Israel and with the pragmatic uh, Sunni Arab countries, mainly Saudi Arabia, uh, the Gulf countries, Egypt and Jordan, and the idea or the vision, the strategic vision of the Americans was to uh, to build here a sort of a new regional architecture that will be based on the normalization process between Israel and the Arab countries, where the Palestinian Authority will be part of it, and this will provide better options to the, um, I would say, to the to the Palestinian issue as well. Uh, in the very same time, this uh, new original architecture was supposed to be a sort of an alliance that um, that will stand vis-a-vis -vis the resistance axis, which is led by Iran and supported by Russia and China, and will be able to weaken this uh, axis and the uh, and the strength of this alliance, the strength of this uh, original. Uh, uh, composition or architecture will project directly, directly and positively, okay, to the other um, arenas in the world, and will strengthen uh, the United States of America as well. Uh, and in this regard, we are talking now uh, not only about a, a local war between Israel and Hamas, not only about a regional war. Israel uh, and the Americans against uh, the resistance axis, but we are talking about a global war. We are already in a global war, okay? Um, and, uh, and therefore, I think that um, uh, Israel uh, does not uh, stand alone in this war, and uh, at least uh, the Americans are very, um, I would say, uh, determined and very um, obliged and committed uh, to um, to the to the war objectives of Israel in this regard, because they understand what would be the implications with regard to the region and to the um, international arena, and uh, most of the the European leaders, um, uh, not uh, like uh, most of uh, the European publics, okay, or the European media, but most of the European leaders are in the same position, be it uh, the British Prime Minister, okay, the French President, uh, the German Chancellor, um, the Italian Prime Minister, and so on and so forth. Um, I think that the leaders understand uh, uh, what I uh, described uh, uh, just before, and they understand pretty well that at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we are talking here about a global war between the the barbaric, murderous, extreme Islam uh, and the evil uh, axis and the free world, the, the civilized world. And um, I think that uh, they understand pretty well, although they still do not admit it publicly, that at the end of the day, Israel uh, is the last uh, barrier or the last fourth in front of the barbarian incursion uh, to uh, the civilized world. And this these are not my words, okay? People just have to listen carefully to things that uh, have been said and still said by Hamas leaders and by some other religious and political leaders of the political Islam and the Jihadiyya Salafiyya 
they are talking about um, uh, re-establish of uh, the Islamic Caliphate in the first phase from Marrakesh to Bangladesh, in the second phase, the entire world. And in their perception, Israel is only the first phase. And after the destruction of the, the state of Israel, they intend to reach Berlin, Rome, Paris, New York. Okay, And in their vision, in the Islamic Caliphate, there is no place to infidels, Jews and Christians. And therefore, the infidels, Jews and Christians, have one option and one only, to convert to Islam or to be slaughtered. These are not my words. Okay, These are not my words. These are their words. And I think that uh, at least uh, the Western leaders, or most of them, understand uh, exactly the situation. Uh, now, uh, another comment that I would like to make in this regard is uh, my understanding with regard to the Israeli saga. Okay? The Israeli saga, after um, the murderous event of uh, is that Israel uh, faces that. Not less than that. We are under existential threat. Not because Hamas is an existential threat, neither has an existential threat, but the idea that there is a very broad axis or camp and, uh, which is supported by Russia and China, and the idea that Israel is already engaged in a multi-front war, uh, and the idea that there are more fronts that might be opened against Israel, this is something that uh, shapes Israeli psyche uh, with regard to the sense of the threat. Okay? And uh, when you are in an, under an existential threat, you have two options and two only, to be or not to be. And due to the fact that uh, the second is not an option for us, we do not intend to leave the state of Israel. On the contrary, we intend that the state of Israel, the state of Israel will stand forever as the nation state of the Jewish people to prosper and to be secured and safe. We have to do all what we have to do uh, in order to assure that this option will be realized. And this is exactly the, the situation that we are in. And therefore, the international... Uh, uh, the international uh, media or the international community is important. The American support is very, very, very crucial. But if we will be um, pushed to the corner, okay, uh, then with all the respect to the international community and with all the respect to the United States of America, we will do what we have to do in order to survive here. Okay? Uh, and this is exactly uh, where we are now. I think that we uh, are full determined, be it the government, be it the IDF, be it the Israeli public, we see the levels of the social cohesion, we see the level of the resilience, and we see the strength of the Israeli society. And uh, at the end of the day, we will finalize what we have to finalize, and we will finalize it with the upper hand. Maybe for Israel, it's better to have a strategy that it's not just relying on one camp. As you said, there is a broader conflict and uh, we are on the side of the United States. But as we saw in Ukraine, at some point, maybe the United States and the West can uh, leave Israel alone. And uh, maybe it's better also not to uh, cut the connections, uh, the good uh, relationship uh, that Israel built uh, over the years also with uh, China and Russia. And uh, maybe Israel can explain better what you said before to them, that uh, maybe Israel is the first enemy of uh, jihadistic, Islamistic uh, terrorist groups, but after that, uh, Russia also could be their uh, enemy and also China because they also are not Muslim. And we saw that they have a big Muslim community inside of those countries and it uh, in the future could be a big problem for them as well, as we already saw in one of the regions in Russia when uh, angry Muslims were looking for uh, Jews. So uh, what do you think is the best way for Israel to maneuver in this world? Or you think we just need to stay with the United States uh, all the way? 
we are in a different world now. We have to remember that the history of the state of Israel is now divided to two parts or two chapters. The first chapter or part is from the establishment of the state of Israel till October 7, 23. And the second chapter is from 7, October 7, 23 uh, and on. We are in a different world. If in the old world, uh, we were capable to, to be um, ambiguous or to be blurred and uh, to play on uh, two weddings, you know, to be with the foot here and the foot there. We have some interest with Russia in Syria, and uh, therefore we have to be uh, very cautious uh, with regard to our approach in Ukraine, okay? This is, this is, that this does not exist anymore. Now, there is no any place for, for uh, I would say, um, a blurred strategies or uh, ambiguous uh, uh, ambiguity, or um, uh, as Kissinger said, um, uh, 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 a structure the ambiguity or something like that. Okay, now we are in the phase of very crystal clear. Uh, uh, moral approach. Uh, we are uh, required uh, for um, uh, a moral clarity, and the moral clarity says that we that we are in a situation that we are with us or against us. So first of all, there is no any replacement for the uh, for the special relations between Israel and the United States of America, Russia, China. Uh, cannot replace the United States and Israel does not intend and didn't intend in the past to replace uh, the United States with uh, Russia and China. Secondly, Russia betrayed Israel and actually stabbed Israel in the back. This is the situation. Russia is our enemy today and China as well. Okay, It doesn't mean that we have to uh, to cut the relations with them, but we have to understand where they stand. Okay, And they do not stand with us. They are in the evil camp, not in the camp of the good guys. Thirdly, we have to understand that we are talking about a much broader issue, which relates to the to the to the interrelations and to the power balance between the superpowers. Okay, and Israel here is not the major player. Um, I mean, that there are frictions and there is a competition between uh, the United States, China, and Russia. China and Russia um, um, are do not accept the the I would say the the international order which is based on the leading of the United States of America as a superpower. They want to see uh, an alternative uh, international order, and therefore they are fighting America. They are fighting America in Ukraine. They are fighting America in the in the Southern Chinese Sea and in other places. And the Middle East is another arena that they are fighting America. Okay. Russia and China, as well as Iran, that both support, okay, were not pleased from the American vision with regard to the Middle East. All the idea of the new regional architecture, which was the American uh, slash Israeli vision, was something that uh, that actually operated against their uh, major strategic interests here in the broader Middle East. And therefore, they did all the possible efforts in order to collapse and uh, unfortunately, they succeeded for the time being, okay, because the normalization talks between Israel and Saudi Arabia has been stopped. The Arab capitals are under huge pressure because of their publics uh, due to the scenes of the war from the Gaza Strip. And um, now we are in a sort of uh, hold. Okay, uh, in the in the building process of the new regional architecture, and the Russians and the Chinese, as well as the Iranians, are very pleased that this uh, vision has not been has not been realized yet. Um, but we have to understand that the, the Middle East, in this regard, is another conflict theater uh, of uh, of these three superpowers. Um, with regard to um, to the idea of uh, the general international order. Um, and uh, and therefore, I think that uh, uh, the the entire free world, led by the United States of America, must understand the importance of Israel in this regard, and the and the 
cruciality of uh, the Israeli might and the Israeli deterrence here in the broader Middle East, because uh, uh, when Israel is strong and when Israel deters its enemies, and with, when Israel will accomplish successfully the mission in the Gaza Strip and later on in uh, Lebanon with regard to Hezbollah, Israel serves the interests of, this, of, of the free world. Israel actually protects the interests of the, of the free world in this regard. And uh, therefore, there is a very crucial importance to the support of the free world uh, in Israel in its war uh, now against Hamas, later on against Hezbollah. Okay, and do you think that the former Prime Minister of Israel, uh, Naftali Bennett, uh, made the right decision at the beginning of the war in Europe? He decided that Israel could uh, be some kind of mediator if uh, Russia and the West will accept it. And he even uh, met uh, the president of Russia and also he spoke with the president of Ukraine. And uh, since then, Israel is in, in this um, war in Europe uh, in a position, uh, let's say, in the middle, more or less. We are saying uh, sometimes that we are more with Ukraine, but Ukraine claiming that we are more with Russia. Do you think this is the right strategy now when we I have the war was, in uh, Israel? I think that uh, uh, it was a mistake, of course, in a retro perspective. Uh, it was a sort of exaggeration with regard to the Israeli uh, uh, possibilities. Um, and uh, I think that it was also wrong that Israel didn't stand from the first beginning uh, uh, with Ukraine. Um, now the situation is going to be changed dramatically. Uh, we are waiting for the visit of President Zelensky here. Um, and I think that it's very clear that Israel and Ukraine are uh, in, in, in the same camp, okay, are in the same uh, position. Both of them uh, democratic uh, countries that were attacked by, uh, uh, by external forces. Uh, both of them uh, countries that fight for their democracy and for their freedom and for their independence. And both of them are fighting the same enemies um, at the end of the day, because we are talking about uh, an axis or about a camp. Okay, And we already have mentioned the, the, the Russian support in uh, this resistance uh, axis here in the region. And we know that uh, Russia is the, the, the aggressive and Russia is the invader to uh, to Ukraine and we know exactly uh, how the Russians are fighting there in Ukraine and we can find some similarities even between the way that they conduct their warfare and the way that uh, Hamas and the the other Iranian proxies are conducting their warfare uh, so unfortunately um, Russia um, positioned itself uh, in the in the wrong uh, camp and uh, unfortunately, uh, Russia is a civilized uh, country with a uh, very impressive heritage and history, um, affiliated itself with uh, with the barbarics, with uh, with murderers, with terrorists. And uh, I think that uh, this is an historical mistake that uh, Russia will pay for uh, for many years to come. Uh, and I hope that uh, one day uh, Russia will wake up and we understand that this is the wrong place for them to be. And now in the United States, there is a big debate if to continue to support Ukraine as they supported before. And uh, the administration of Biden is trying uh, to provide to both countries, Israel and Ukraine, uh, support that is coming together as one package. And maybe this is also something that President Zelensky wants to promote when he's coming to Israel. What do you think? Is it a right also for Israel to make this connection between uh, Israel and Ukraine when it comes uh, to the support yes. of the United States? Definitely, yes. And I, uh, I, I do understand the, the, the American position in this regard because they understand what uh, I told you um, before that we are facing a sort of um, of a global war and uh, Russia is the enemy in Ukraine and Russia is the enemy here 
um, and uh, in in a different in a different manners of involvement. Okay, but uh, Russia is here and Russia is there, and in both cases, Russia is in the wrong camp. Okay, and we are talking about a global war where there is no other option but the very uh, crystal clear victory of the free world led by the United States of America, and therefore. The United States of America should uh, uh, invest all the possible resources and efforts in both arenas in order to assure its victory uh, on the on the other camp. Okay, um, and uh, there is a common denominator between Israel and Ukraine in this regard. Uh, Russia is the common denominator, but uh, Russia is uh, a common denominator. Um, I would say, or the surface of the common denominator. The common denominator is much wider because we are talking about uh, a much wider camp, okay, which is composed of the Russians, the Chinese, the Iranians. We see the coalition between Iran and Russia and their level of cooperation in Ukraine. So Russia and Iran cooperate in Ukraine and Russia and Iran cooperate in the Middle East, okay? China cooperates with Iran, uh, and I assume that this is something that also impacts the Ukrainian arena, and China cooperates with Iran in the Middle East. So at the end of the day, we are talking about the camp of the good guys against the camp of the bad guys, and uh, Ukraine and Israel are in the same camp in this regard, and the Americans understand that they have to do all the possible efforts in these two theaters in order to assure uh, that uh, the free world uh, will uh, be at the end of the day with the upper hand. Okay. And uh, do you think this cooperation uh, between uh, China and the Arabs, Muslims and Russia with them, is it different why, from what it used to be or still with uh, Europe and the United States? Because they also have a lot of uh, trade and relationships uh, and they are cooperating on a lot of uh, stuff also so is there some ideology behind it or it's just uh, interests if it is the enemy much, of my enemy then it's my friend and this is all of much, the, it's all about yes exactly it is much beyond economy okay and uh, and the uh, economic uh, interests this is first of all a matter of ideology and the, as i said the ideology is with regard to the international order. How should the international order will be shaped? And uh, Russia and China are challenging the current international order. They do not accept it, they reject it. They are making all the possible efforts in order to change it. This is the reason that China does what it does in the South and Chinese Sea. This is exactly the reasons why China uh, deepens its involvement in the entire Middle East, okay? Even uh, if it is by using economic means, uh, although they also built uh, uh, some some military compounds in the, in the Middle East, but the, the Chinese are involved mainly economically. Okay, but it's not only for economic purposes. It's first of all in order to gain more influence in this region, and to leverage this influence in this region to a, a broader or a, a greater influence in other regions in the world. And all of these, at the end of the day, are done in order to be much more influential superpower vis-a-vis -vis the United States of America. This is, the, this is the, 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 the name of the game, okay? We are talking here about the, the nature or the essence of, um, of, the, of the international order. Therefore, it's, of course, ideological. And it is, of course, strategic. It's not only economic uh, issue. And this is exactly the ideology of Russia. And this is exactly the reasons that brought Russia to invade Ukraine, okay? Um, the idea that they were not happy uh, from uh, uh, the Ukrainian desire to join NATO and the EU, uh, the fear that the NATO will be deployed along uh, the borders of Russia, uh, the idea that uh, NATO, which represents mainly the interests of the American, uh, the Americans in their in the Russian eyes, um, will be stronger, and uh, all of these issues are connected to the main refusal to accept the American hegemony in the in the in the global arena, and um, the the Russians. Uh, 
use the middle uh, the middle east as another theater uh, that can be leveraged in order to um, to create uh, some uh, achievements in other arenas this was the reason for their intervention in september 2015 in syria and uh, the idea that they were deeply involved in syria and they were they had their presence here in the middle east uh, made them very influential uh, here in the region and the influence their influence here in the region uh, was leveraged by them in order to uh, to to project uh, on the on the Ukraine Ukrainian uh, theater okay this is the name of the game uh, and therefore uh, we are talking about ideology we are talking about strategy and we are talking about the um, essential, I would say, basic refusal to accept the existing international order, which is based on the American hegemony. And you said before, if the United States will uh, stop support Israel in the war in Gaza, Israel should to continue anyway. Is it uh, not too dangerous for Israel to lose yes. the support of all the superpowers and to be alone in this neighborhood? Yes, yes it is. But you know what is more dangerous? That will not that will not exist here. This is much more dangerous. And this is a, the reason that I try to explain about the Israeli psyche. Okay, what is the Israeli perception after October seven? This is the perception we are facing an existential threat. This is chapter B of our war of independence. Okay, by the way, we uh, we were dragged to our war of independence without without any support of any superpower. Okay, at the beginning we had a sort of support of the USSR. Okay, uh, but it was not a full support, and eventually Israel uh, fought uh, alone against five uh, state armies. Okay, when the the total population of Israel was six hundred thousand people only. Okay, and uh, we fought a year and a half. So now we are in chapter B of our war of independence. At least this is the perception, and we have to assure our existence here. We, of course, prefer that uh, the United States of America will remain with us and will continue supporting us. And we are doing all the efforts in order to be full coordinated with the Americans. And we are also um, making some concessions here and there uh, in order to uh, in order to, um, to to reply the or in order to um, uh, to realize some some American interests here. But at the end of the day, we have a very crystal clear interest here, and it's the interest of existence in order to continue existing, secure and safe here in the nation state of the Jewish people. We have to eliminate Hamas from its military and governmental capacities. We have to eliminate Hezbollah from its military and uh, governmental capacities. We have to weaken the Iranian axis. Okay, and we have to be very strong here in the region. We have to be able to deter our enemies. And I think that only strong Israel will be an incentive for the Arab countries here in the region to cooperate with Israel and to assist the Americans to build the original architecture, which serves the major strategic interests of the Americans here in the region and the major interests of the saint countries here in the region, which are the Sunni pragmatic Arab countries, okay? This is the only the only way that I can see. This is the only direction that I can see. And I think that we are going towards this direction and Israel must win the war and Israel must be able to introduce a very crystal clear victory image. This will deter all the enemies around us this will bring the Arab countries to tighten the relations and the cooperation with Israel. And this will enable Israel, the Americans, and the, the local player here in the region to build the new regional architecture. This is the future of the region. Okay, and the last two questions, I will ask them together. What happened? Uh, you said that in the first war of independence, the USSR helped that. Uh, at least uh, uh, to some extent to Israel, and now they are on the other uh, side, as you say. And the second question, how dangerous this new world that so uh, 
many weapons are produced everywhere and they are going to the war in Europe and then they are maybe coming here to the Middle East. Uh, how all of this will be dangerous because any terrorist group now can maybe buy on the black market uh, weapons that they even didn't dream before that that it was possible to buy it. I think I think that you are asking a very very important question, and this is exactly that your question is eventually the answer uh, to um, to the to the current challenge that uh, Israel and the free world actually are facing and this is the world of terrorism the world of evil which is supported by uh, first of all led by iran supported by russia china north korea and therefore the war against terrorism is not only the war the private war of israel okay uh, this is the war of the entire free world and the entire free world should be recruited to this mission should be very determined should run after all the terrorists and after all of those who support terrorists in any way. And unfortunately, we have uh, uh, some countries that uh, support uh, the terrorism, uh, be it Russia, be it China, be it North Korea, or Iran, and unfortunately Qatar as well. And uh, I think that if the world uh, really wants, the free world really wants to fight effectively terrorism and to prevent dangers like you have mentioned before uh, the world the free world must be very determined um, and uh, uh, versus or vis-a-vis -vis the countries that support terrorism and uh, they have to be very harsh with regard uh, to their uh, policy vis-a-vis um, uh, -vis these countries and uh, if the free world will be determined in this regard and will be tough uh, with regard to its policy towards this country and will be united uh, in, the, in the war against terrorism and will continue supporting Israel, then the free world will win at the end of the day and terrorism will lose and all the countries that support terrorism will lose as well. Uh, although uh, terrorism always will be, uh, although uh, evil countries always will exist, but they must be much, much weaker and less influential. And regarding the first part of the question, how Israel uh, lost the support uh, that it has at the beginning with the support of the USSR, the first oh, yeah. uh, independent this, war? Uh, this is, this is the historical chapter of our interview because um, the, the USSR, the communist USSR, believed that Israel actually will be part of the communist world, okay, which is led by the USSR. But uh, after the, um, the beginning of the Korea War, when uh, our first prime minister, the founding father, David Ben-Gurion, actually declared that Israel supports the United States of America in the Korean War, because he understood that the place of Israel is in the free world and not in the communist world, then the Russians uh, or the Soviets understood that uh, Israel is a lost case, uh, Israel will not be part of their camp, and uh, they uh, stopped supporting Israel. I understand. Okay, thank you very much. It was a pleasure.